hello and welcome everyone in this video I will be uh, guiding you to install uh, Oracle clusterware on 11g release 2 and right before we uh, start installing 11g release 2 clusterware uh, we need to understand that there are certain mandatory prerequisites we are required to set so right from the uh, storage area network or the central storage that will be accessed by the number of nodes that we will configure in the cluster and things like that so the very first prerequisite is to create a storage area network or the central storage so I will be using a particular software called open filer and the open filer will actually uh, you know store or hold the uh, raw disks and with the help of open filer we can uh, consider the open filer software as a central storage because it will be holding the disks and later on we will use uh, uh, to create the partitions inside those disks so let us first uh, start uh, configuring the storage area network that is SAN or the shared storage is what we can call it in the alternate way so uh, let me start from the beginning I'll have to create a virtual machine and I'll click on next I'll click again I'll click on next again I'll have to browse and find out where my open filer software is located uh, so here it is open filer I'll select disk uh, that is 64 bit so all the uh, uh, softwares that I'm going to use in this video would be 64 bit right from the open filer and then uh, Oracle Enterprise Linux 6.3 and then the 11g release 2 clusterware software as well so uh, since it says over here could not detect which operating system in this disk image you will need to specify which operating system will be installed so we are actually not installing the operating system uh, since uh, like I said open file is not an operating system it is just uh, a kind of a uh, you know storage where it can hold uh, multiple disks inside it the raw disks okay so now I'll click on next since uh, open filer is not an operating system we will select other and then other 64 bit click on next I'll have to mention the name uh, that is SAN over here I'll browse the location where I want this to be installed and save that inside rack setup I'll make a new folder inside it and I'll make another subfolder I'll click on next again I don't have to make any changes over here uh, the RAM that I will assign will be 512 MB since we are not going to use SAN on a on a very uh, regular basis or a regular interval so it is 512 MB something uh, which I believe is more than enough uh, because it is just a central storage so we will access central storage with a different way which I'll show it to you later in this video so 512 MB of RAM for the configuration of storage area network or the shared storage will be more than enough click on next use host only networking so I am selecting the network adapter or the NIC uh, as a use host only networking I'll click on next uh, LSI logic it is recommended so I am not going to change that uh, ID is recommended okay fine click on next create a new virtual disk click on next store a virtual disk as a single file and then I will mention 10 GB uh, for the configuration of the shared storage I'll click on next again so this is how the configuration of the machine that is about to get created looks like name is SAN and the location wherever I save could differ from your location version is the uh, workstation version that shows of uh, that is the virtual machine version uh, OS that I'm using 64 bit hard disk is 10 GB that I have selected memory is 512 MB network adapter is host only that's all if at all I want to customize something I can click on customize hardware and then I can make whatever changes I want from here okay so I'm currently not customizing any hardware so I'll just close this I will click on finish all right so SAN uh, has been or uh, this uh, shared storage has been created we will configure it quickly okay so this is how the page of uh, open filer will look like I have to uh, by clicking on my mouse get inside this and hit enter oh, this may take uh, a minute or so
so the page will look like this uh, I'll have to click on next uh, the uh, default language will be US English I'm not going to change that I'll click on next again and it says it basically says would you like to initialize this drive erasing all the data so uh, 10 GB we actually don't have anything inside it like we know we have just added it so I'll click on yes if at all if the data is there it will be lost it is what it said now uh, I have to select create custom layout and that's it I'll click on next uh, the 10 GB that I have added uh, for the file system of storage area network or the shared storage I'll create certain mount points starting from root and I'll assign just 2 GB to it not more than that and then uh, I'll create temporary then I'll have user or USR variable okay now we are left over with swap uh, so I'll change the file system and I'll select swap I'll assign 1024 that is 1 GB since I have a uh, 512 MB assigned as a, a physical RAM to this machine so I the swap uh, memory should be the double of it so that is 1 GB all right uh, that's all we have five partitions root variable USR and TMP and the swap so uh, rest of the memory is left over will not use it will just click on next it says uh, swap space uh, turn on the swap space immediately all right okay ext linux bootloader is what it is selected over here so ext linux bootloader is only used whenever whenever you're using a CD or a disk or a DVD uh, for uh, you know installing the open filer you would select ext linux now since we are using an iso image like you, you can see it over here open fire esa iso we will select the grub bootloader and then we'll click on next over here uh, you will have to edit the network devices and uncheck the enable ipv6 first and then manual configuration since you are going to assign the ip address manually and the ip address would be 147.43.0.5 and the net mask for this would be 255.255.0.0 the reason uh, we uh, select this net mask is not by our own choice because this IP address belongs to the class B 147 IP address belongs to the class B so I have a separate video created where you can actually see uh, the types of IP addresses used in rack setup and types of IP addresses in general so that you can have a better idea and then you can assign whatever IP addresses that you want okay and uh, so that's all about it I'm using the IP addresses 147.43.0.5 and the sub, uh, net mask for the class B will always be 255.255.0.0 we cannot change it by yourself we'll just click on OK now so it is asking me for the uh, to mention the name of the machine that is host.domain.com should be the uh, style or should be the format so host over here will be san dot domain dot com is nothing but the group name that is uh, basically the domain name of course that is cluster dot com you can keep any name for your domain if, uh, if at all you want to keep it on your own name you can do that uh, I prefer to keep cluster dot com uh, since I'm explaining this so uh, uh, it will be you know pretty easy for you to understand it and then soon after you are you know excelling in this then you can easily keep whatever name you like uh, I'm not mentioning gateway and primary DNS for which I would be prompted or uh, given as an error it says error with data you have not specified the field gateway like I just said so I have I can continue I do not want to specify that now it says you have not specified the field primary DNS that is fine also I can click on continue uh, now I'll select the region mm, and then I'll click on next I need to specify the password which uh, can be anything I'm assigning it as Oracle click on next again so now it is going to format the file system uh, like you can see root then it will use uh, temporary then variable and things like that uh, the number of partitions that we have created and then it will start installing the open filer and uh, soon after the open filer is installed we will uh, see what are we supposed to do next so we'll wait for the open filer to get the uh, installation procedure completed this is how uh, the page or the screen will appear soon after the 
uh, installation is complete and it says congratulations the installation is complete press the reboot button to reboot your system so right before we reboot we will add another hard disk uh, to the existing 10 GB because that 10 GB has already been consumed with the by, uh, by the open filer operating system uh, I mean the open filer uh, system not the operating system uh, so I'll click on a uh, hard disk I'll click on add and then the hard disk is already highlighted over here I'll click on next iSCSI and ID so it says cannot be added IDE cannot be added while the VMware is powered on since the open filer is running in the background I cannot use IDE moreover I don't have to use IDE I have to use SCSI SCSI means small computer system interface and this is a kind of a file system which we use uh, for the disks to start up with this so SCSI file system will start first and whatever disks are associated with SCSI will also start soon after SCSI starts so I would want to create the disks with SCSI because this is something uh, which is very common and a sophisticated file system uh, for the disks to initiate so SCSI is something which is required to be selected for adding a new hard disk I'll click on next create a new virtual hard disk over here and then uh, store uh, the uh, store virtual disk as a single file I would use 60 GB currently you can uh, if you do not have enough space uh, while you're practicing you can also use 40 GB and then we can divide it a little later which you can see it in the uh, uh, later in this video so 60 GB is what I'm assigning which I will divide into the partitions later how do we do that is what we'll look at uh, in the later part of the video so 60 GB the reason why I'm adding 60 GB over here is because it will s uh, it will be started with SCSI that is small uh, uh, you know small computer system interface and that will uh, let you create the ASM disks as well and this 60 GB will remain on the shared storage so whatever database that you create and uh, the your your voting disk can Oracle cluster registry that is OCR will be saved on the 60 GB and then I'll click on next I'll click on finish so now I have a new hard disk that is uh, that will start with SCSI the other old one which is taken uh, or consumed already that is 10 GB will have a file a different file system that is IDE so let us not get into the depth of the file systems now we'll straight away click on OK now we will reboot so if we reboot if the open file reboots now it will reboot along with that 60 GB newly added hard disk which will reflect inside it it is the step uh, you can actually close the open file and also do that but it is better if you can do it uh, if you do it this uh, right before you reboot so that uh, you can remember it maybe you might forget after you uh, you know uh, shut down the open file or you might get confused so it is better if you follow this step uh, for all those uh, practitioners who are still practicing on rack and uh, on the virtual machine so uh, now the open filer is going to reboot and this is how the screen looks like we'll wait for it for a minute and then the open filer should be up okay, the open filer is up now so uh, let us see what it says welcome to open filer ESA the version of open filer is mentioned over here the web administration GUI is actually referring to the graphical user interface it means we can create the partitions inside uh, the open filer which is holding the disk of 60 GB a raw disk like I said it is not an operating system it will just hold the disk for you uh, so we can have a URL uh, and we can access this URL soon after we have the uh, nodes creation done and then we can access the URL which we will cover it in the later part of the video now if I want to log into SAN I have uh, I can log in as root and then I have uh, assigned the password as Oracle now if I get into fdisk hyphen L just to check uh, the list of the disks that I have so it shows DEV SDA over here that is 10 GB which is consumed by the storage area network or the shared storage so you can see swap size and all that which we have defined and then 2 2 GB over it then I have DEVSDB which I have just added due to the difference of file system of the operating systems like Windows and uh, virtual machine over here it shows a 64 GB but this is the 60 GB actually that we have just added and it says D uh, disk DEVSDB doesn't contain a valid partition table 
so it doesn't have a partition at all it is just a raw disk which we will create a partition uh, soon after we you know uh, install or probably configure the operating system Linux okay so this is how the uh, you know uh, SAN looks like since we cannot create the partitions over here or we don't want to create the partitions from here I'll just exit and uh, now uh, we will start uh, the installation of uh, Oracle Enterprise Linux and then we will uh, access that from uh, any of these nodes uh, in the later part of the video